Thank you all for joining the uh, training session today. I uh, hope uh, you could see my screen and hear the voice clear. So uh, before we proceed, please uh, provide a thumbs up so that we can go ahead with the training today. Thank you all for the confirmation. So uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Asha, the trainer for today's uh, training session. I'm expertised in both remote support and remote access. So uh, this is the agenda I have segmented for today's uh, training session. So we will see in detail about these topics mentioned here. So first we will understand how remote support works within Zoho Assist and the options and the features provided with remote support followed by the scenarios experienced by the technicians uh, during the on-demand remote support session. Then we will also see the configuration part that we have with the application, a few uh, rebranding settings available and uh, other uh, settings that is available with the application can be uh, checked out in this configuration part. Then we will also see the integrations uh, that we have with Soho Assist. We have uh, third-party integrations that can be integrated with Soho Assist and a few of Zoho applications that can be integrated with Zoho Assist. Lastly, we will have the Q&A section. Uh, in case if you have any question and questions, uh, please raise it over the Q&A section that we have so that uh, I do have the expert team around who will answer your question instantly. Going to the next slide, uh, we will see the key terms that, uh, that I will be using in the training today. So the first key term is technician. Technician is a person who initiates an on-demand remote support session. Customer. Customer is a person whose screen will be accessed off, who will be going to share their screen where uh, the technician will troubleshoot an issue and get that resolved. Then uh, we will also see uh, the technician console. Technician console is the options provided to the technician to perform during an on-demand remote support session, which is the blue bar. Uh, and followed by the customer console. Customer console is again the options provided to the customer to perform during an ongoing session. So these are the key terms I'll be using in the training today so that you can have that uh, notice. So here is the system requirement slide. So uh, with these operating system, you will be able to initiate an on-demand remote support session where you can go ahead and initiate an on-demand uh, session from the technician side, being it Windows, Mac, and Linux machine. As a technician, you can also initiate a remote session from a Chromebook device. And the technician can also use an Android mobile device in order to initiate an on-demand remote support session. So here, the remote computer can be of these respective OS that is mentioned. So the remote computer can be a Windows, Mac, and a Linux machine. The remote computer can be a Chromebook. It can also be a mobile device, being it Android and we also support Raspberry Pi machine. So these are the basic compatibility of uh, how a technician can, from which a technician can start an on-demand remote support session, and the remote computer can be of these respective operating system. So understanding remote support. So uh, why uh, we would need to go for on-demand remote support session? So say that uh, you run an, uh, uh, a computer a service center and you have your customers reaching out in order to uh, help them out troubleshoot the particular issue that they are facing on their computer uh, and you as a technician will help them troubleshoot the issue and get resolved in that case you can always start an on-demand remote support session with zoho assist and instantly provide a nine digit code to the customer on the other end who requires assistance and uh, once uh, the customer uh, downloads an ap uh, application, a uh, downloaded EXE file, automatically the customer screen will be replicated at the technician side and the technician will have full access and control over the customer's screen in order to troubleshoot the issue. So here you will always need to have an end user beside the remote computer in order to accept the nine digit code and join the session. So this is how uh, remote support works with Zoho Assist. So we will see the architecture behind how remote support works uh, within Zoho Assist. So here, all you see is the technician and remote customer. The technician can go ahead and instantly start a, a, a session, a remote session, uh, by clicking on the Start Now button in the application console. And once the nine-digit code is generated by the technician, the technician can provide it to the remote 
customer on the other end. So the customer can get the nine digit code, enter it on the application, which is join.zoho.com for the customer to join. Once the customer joins the session, automatically uh, the customer screen will be replicated at the technician side and the technician will have full access and control over it. So this is a simple architecture behind how remote support works within Zoho Assist. So let's see them in action. Uh, we will see the options provided to the technician to perform during an on-demand remote support session and the options provided to the customer uh, to perform uh, during uh, the session and a few other options uh, for the technicians to have access over the remote computer will be checked out here. So let me take you to uh, the Zoho Assist application and help you with the options that we provide with the application. So here, uh, this is the homepage of Zoho Assist. So you can log into assist.zoho.com uh, using your user credentials, which is the username and password. So once you log in to the application, you'll be uh, you'll be uh, shown with the homepage. So this is going to be the homepage of the screen. And uh, here you can hit the start now button to instantly start an on-demand remote support session. Or you can also enter the email ID of the respective customer who will, uh, who will need to uh, start the session and then uh, we can proceed with that. So I uh, hope my uh, Zoho Assist application is shown to you. So let me quickly share the screen. So uh, I hope you can see the Zoho Assist application in which I am logged into. So this is how you can log into the portal using assist.zoho.com. So hitting on the Start Now button will automatically generate a nine-digit session ID code where you can provide the nine-digit session ID code to the customer uh, beside the remote computer to join an on-demand remote support session. So uh, here you can also invite the customer using the email ID of the respective customer whom you like to invite them for uh, the session. So that is also possible. So here, uh, this is uh, the page uh, provided to the technician for them to guide the customer to join the session. So they can guide the customer to type in join.zoho.com in, uh, in a browser and provide the session ID for them to join the session or uh, the technician can simply uh, use this particular link to copy and share it via the internal communication tool that they have for them to join an on-demand remote support session. You can also invite the customer via email and SMS. So I do have a test customer who has joined the session here uh, and I hope you can see. So the customer can also join a session using this particular URL which is join.zoho.com. So you can guide your customer to use this particular URL in order to join an on-demand remote support session. They'll be uh, uh, shown with this page where uh, the customer can enter the nine digit code that is provided by the technician and the name and the name of the customer and hit join. Once they hit join, automatically they'll be prompted to download uh, the particular exe file. Once they download the exe file, uh, the customer screen will be uh, shown to the technician and the technician will have full access and control over it. So here uh, I have a test customer who has joined the session and the test customer is connected to multiple monitors where I can watch multiple monitors simultaneously and work on it. Or I can choose the respective monitor in which I would need to work with and where I will have full access and control over it. So this is uh, how you go ahead and connect to an on-demand remote support session. So we will move ahead with the options provided to the technician uh, to perform during an on-demand remote support session. So the blue bar is, at the left is going to be the technician console, the options provided to the technician. So we will see in detail about these options. The first option is view. Under view, we have actual size. Actual size will uh, replicate the actual screen resolution of the remote computer to the technician screen. In the case, if you want to fit it, uh, fit the screen, you can fit it to screen. Uh, so it fits between the resolution of the customer and the technician screen. We also have full screen option. Full screen where you will have the full satisfaction of exactly working on the remote computer. And in the case, if you'd like to access your other uh, other uh, browser tabs that is open in your machine, you can exit the full screen and switch over to that. So that is with the full screen option that we have. Then we have show remote cursor. Show remote cursor is where uh, you'll be able to uh, show, uh, you'll be able to see the remote cursor of the customer. So in the case, if the customer would like to point out to an error message that they have spotted, they can use the cursor and point it towards that specific um, 
uh, option and uh, for an easy communication between the technician and the customer. So the show remote cursor option can be enabled. In the case, if you'd like to hide it, you can hide it whenever you perform any of the sensitive operations. Then we have color quality. Color quality basically depends on the session performance. In the case, if uh, the remote computer is connected to a very good bandwidth and uh, 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 a stable internet connection, you can have the color quality to set it to 100. So based on the preference, the color quality will automatically adjust if you set to automatic. So you can also adjust it between 25, 50, 75, and 100. That is with the color quality option. Then we have screen resolution. Screen resolution, again, uh, based on your preference, you can adjust the screen resolution. So by, uh, the actual screen resolution here is 1920 and 1080. In the case, if you'd like to fit it uh, for the screen resolution based on your preference, you can choose any of these resolutions mentioned here and have it uh, optimized. So that is with the screen resolution option. The next option under the technician console would be the sessions. Under sessions, we have technician invite. Uh, technician invite is where you'll be able to invite um, a primary, uh, a secondary technician to the same session where uh, you, as well as a secondary technician, can simultaneously work on the remote session and get the issue troubleshooted. For example, if you would like to invite a senior developer who is very much expertised in debugging a specific error, in that case, you can go ahead and invite a secondary technician. So both the primary uh, level technician and the secondary level technician can uh, debug the issue and get the troubleshooted. So you can invite the in a, a secondary technician using an email invite. You can enter the email ID and send an invite. Or you can simply copy this particular URL and share it via internal communication tool that you have. So that is with uh, internal invite. In case if you'd like to uh, invite a person or a technician from an outside organization. For example, uh, you are um, you you faced an issue uh, in an antivirus, a third party application that you are currently using, and you li like uh, the intervention of the respective person from the antivirus team. You can invite them uh, from using this email address here. You can click on invite. Automatically, an email invite will be sent. So the antivirus team member can join the session. Who is an external member can join the same session and get the issue troubleshooted. So that is with invite technician option. Then we have a uh, share my screen option where uh, share my screen is as a technician, you will be able to share your own screen to the customer on the other end. For example, in case if you have a short demo to be shown to the customer who's present beside the other end, you can share your screen and uh, um, you can showcase the guidelines that is available or you can demonstrate a couple of steps that needs to be uh, done exactly on the remote computer can also be uh done using the share my screen option then we have elevate to admin mode elevate to admin mode is uh, where you will be elevate uh, you'll be able to elevate the session in admin mode where you can perform any of the administrative tasks on the remote computer so uh, for example say that you as a technician is connected to a remote computer which has standard privileges standard account privileges in that case you'll not be able to perform any of the administrative tasks in, in, in this case, you can go ahead and use the elevate to admin mode, which will automatically run the session in admin mode by entering the UAC credentials where the username and the password can be entered and you can elevate the session. So once the session is elevated, you can automatically perform any of the administrative tasks. So this particular option is grayed out here because I have already connected to an administrative uh, account uh, of the remote computer. So that is the reason uh, the option is grayed out here. And we have remote audio. You can enable this toggle button to hear the audio of the remote computer at the technician site. For example, in the case, uh, if you have a, a pop-up notification which says installation is over, in that case, you can go ahead and enable this uh, toggle button to hear the audio uh, at the technician site. Then we have few short key combinations, which is control, all, delete, and send, all, tap. A basic uh, control all delete and all tap uh, combinations will work. So when I hit send or control alt and delete, automatically I'll be taken to this page where I'll be able to perform uh, uh, the change password. Or in the case I would like to uh, switch between um, uh, the users, I'll be able to switch. Uh, in the case I would like to navigate to the uh, task manager, yes, I'll be able to do so. So all these uh, options can be uh, done uh, using the send control all delete option. So let me move to the next option here. Uh, we have is uh, send all tab. All tab will switch between the tabs that is open. And as I mentioned, uh, the control alt and delete 
uh, will uh, launch this particular option here where you can simply perform all these actions in a single click and get that done. Then uh, we will switch to uh, the send all tab. Yes, uh, it will switch between the tabs that is currently open on the remote machine. Then we have uh, disable input devices, which will disable the mouse and the keyboard combinations of the remote computer. So this is one of the security option provided uh, during an on-demand remote support session. Uh, here, disabling the mouse and the keyboard uh, combinations will let the technician have full control over the remote computer whenever they perform any of the sensitive operation. Uh, then we have blank and screen, another security option provided uh, during the ongoing session, uh, which is uh, it will completely blanken the screen whenever the technician is entering few sensitive credentials like um, a username and a password. A password might be sensitive. So in that case, you can blanken the screen for some time until you are performing the uh, operation and then you can revoke the blank screen. Then we have um, send clipboard keystrokes. Send clipboard keystrokes, uh, basic clipboard combinations can be performed uh, using this operation. But uh, the highlight of send clipboard keystrokes option here is uh, whenever uh, you uh, log into uh, the app, uh, remote machine and uh, you are in the log screen of the remote computer and you would like to uh, unlock it by entering the password. So uh, by, uh, by the combinations of cut, copy, paste, you will not be able to uh, perform it on the uh, log screen of the remote computer. But using the send clipboard keystrokes, it will automatically copy the content of the password and you'll be able to paste it on the lock screen in order to unlock and use it. So that is the major highlight of send clipboard keystrokes. Uh, so that is how it works. You can try this and test out to see uh, more on it. Then we have uh, screenshots, a uh, screenshot where you'll be able to take a complete screenshot of the current page that you're currently viewing. You can save it to your uh, downloads or you can save it to your own computer, which is the technician's computer, or you can also sync it to cloud for later reference. So that is with screenshot. Then we have short keys. Short keys are basic uh, short key combinations can be performed. Like uh, as, as you see here, the control alt and delete option is available here. For example, say that you like to open the run command on the remote machine, you can click on the uh, Windows option here and the letter R on the technician's keyboard so that will automatically open the run command. Uh, this is because uh, when I hit uh, Windows and R, letter R on, on my keyboard, it will automatically open the run command on the technician's keyboard and not directly on the remote computer because of browser restrictions. In this case, you can go ahead and use uh, these short key options that is provided within the application to perform uh, actions like this. Then we have set up unattended access. Uh, this specific option will go ahead and install the Zoho Assist Unattended Agent on the remote machine. So once this agent is installed on the remote machine, automatically you can connect to the remote computer without anyone being present on the remote machine. So you can access it unattended uh, anytime, anywhere. So uh, we do have a separate module exclusively with Zoho Assist uh, with unattended access. So we will be providing the webinar sessions in the following weeks uh, about unattended access. Then we have network statistics. Network statistics, you'll be able to check out the uh, network connectivity of uh, the remote computer and the technician. So here you can see the network connectivity. And in case of any latency, you can have the rectify, the download rate and the upload rate can also be checked here. So if there is any low latency, you can check it out from here and you can switch between um, the networks that you are connected to for a stable connection. Then we have tools option. Under tools, uh, you'll be able to perform any of these actions in a single click. For example, you would like to execute any script uh, on the uh, remote computer. Uh, for example, you have a script uh, that needs to be run on the remote computer. You can use this execute script automatically uh, you can go ahead and choose one of the script that is uh, downloaded uh, from your uh, files and you can hit open that specific file can be executed in a single click then we have power options uh, you'll be able to lock screen log off you can you'll be able to boot up the machine uh, in a single click and you can also boot up the machine in safe mode which will uh, automatically bring back the application in the startup when it is in safe mode and you can also shut down the remote machine in a single click. All these actions can be performed in a single click. Then one major highlight, uh, uh, highlighted uh, option with the application is this quick launch. Uh, all these actions can be performed in a single click. Uh, for example, say that you like to uh, check out the display settings of the remote computer. 
you just click on the display settings here that automatically opens the display settings. You can check out the monitors to which uh, the remote computer is connected to in case if you'd like to uh, check the specifications of uh, the remote computer. Yes, you can also check it out from here. So all these actions can be performed in a single click using the quick launch option. For example, say that you like to go to the registry, you can go to the registry in a single click. So all these options uh, for in case if you'd like to move to the task manager, you hit task manager, automatically the task manager opens there for you. So that is the highlighted feature with Zoho Assist. And few other administrative tasks is provided uh, where you can clean up the disk uh, and you can configure the cleanup. If you are uh, frequently working with uh, uh, the task scheduler, you can switch to the task scheduler in a single click from this option. And again, group policy can be updated in a single click using the update group policy option. So these are tools. Moving to the next option would be files. Under files, we have a uh, web client and native client. In the case, if you like, if you are looking to switch uh, transfer uh, files, you can use web client. In the case, if you are looking to switch uh, folders, you can use the native uh, client in order to transfer folders. So let me go ahead and initiate a test uh, uh, file transfer there for you. So let me go ahead and uh, send a file to the remote machine. So I have initiated the file transfer here. So here I can choose one option to send any any of the file to send it from the, yeah, here it goes. I just send one respective file here and I hope you see this. So there is a prompt notify at the customer screen uh, stating that this particular file has been received. And in case if you'd like to change the location where the file needs to be saved, you can change it. By default, it's going to be desktop. So I hit save automatically the file that I sent is received at the customer side. So that is with the file transfer option. You can also receive files in a similar way. So moving back to the technician console, uh, we do have the chat option. Under chat, we have text chat, voice chat, and video chat. Text chat, a normal text conversation between the technician and the customer. So here, um, the text chat is initiated. In the case, if you'd like to initiate a voice chat and a video chat, you can initiate it from here. A normal video conversation between the technician and the customer can be initiated. Voice call, again, uh, it can be a system call. It will use the computer audio. In case if it's going to be a phone call, you'll have to use the credits uh, in order to uh, make a call uh, from this phone call option. So that is with the chat option. Uh, then moving to the next option is diagnostics. So again, one of the major highlighted uh, feature with the application is diagnostics. So in the case, if you'd like to uh, access the command prompt of uh, the customer screen, uh, you can use the command prompt here and you can execute any of the commands here. So all this can be performed without, uh, without interrupting the customer who is on the screen. For example, say that the customer is uh, uh, would like to attend a meeting or uh, is in the middle of uh, a work. In that case, uh, you as a technician would like to check out their users um, to which uh, the remote computer is connected to and the task management softwares uh, installed on the remote computer can also be checked here. So all these can be performed uh, without interrupting the person who is working on the remote computer. So that is with the diagnostic tools option. Then a few other options for the technician uh, to uh, check out uh, during the ongoing session is uh, multiple monitors. So in the case, uh, if the remote computer is connected to multiple monitors, you'll be able to check it out from here. And uh, you can also alter the view if it is a grid view or a vertical view or a horizontal view. So based on your preference, you can switch the view to be. And you can also choose one respective monitor that, I, that you would need to work with. And we also have notifications and live preview. Uh, notifications is um, any notifications in the second monitor, you'll automatically be notified uh, so that uh, you do not miss out any of the changes. Again, live preview, any changes done in the second monitor will be live preview for you to not miss out any of the changes in the second monitor happening when you while you're working on the first monitor. So that was with multiple monitors. Then we have session notes. So you'll be able to add a quick session notes uh during the session uh of what exactly is happening uh, on the session can also be saved under the session notes so that gets auto saved there for you then we have session details 
session details, uh, you'll be able to check out the details of uh, the session here. Uh, you can uh, edit the title of the session and the customer name and the IP address is also visible. And one highlighted thing is you can also see the device details like the name, the domain name, the operating system, and the last boot time. So in case if, you, if uh, the changes needs a boot up, you can boot it up by checking out the last booted uh, time here. So these are the options for the technician to pro, uh, perform during an on-demand remote support session. So this is going to be the customer console uh, for the customer to perf uh, perform during an on-demand remote support session. So the first option is participants. The customer can check out the participants uh, that is connected to the ongoing session. So uh, you can check out in case if there is any secondary technician join the session, their name will be displayed here. So the participants can be checked out by the customer. Then we have a uh, file transfer again. Uh, the customer can send files using this uh, send file option from here, which will automatically uh, let you choose one respective file and then uh, you can receive it at the technician end. So this is how simple you go ahead and send files from the technician side. Then we have annotations. Annotations is where you'll be able to uh, annotations. Yes. OK, let me save that. So that gets saved there uh, at the technician's downloads. And then you have annotations. Annotations is uh, where you'll be able to uh, use these icons, like, for example, say the pencil icon uh, for, it, for you to draw it on the customer screen. So I just use the pen there. So I'll just uh, circle it, or any of the marks can be used here. For example, I choose a rectangle. And I, I draw a rectangle for uh, the technician to watch what exactly is the error on the remote machine. And you can also clear the screen using the uh, clear option. And again, uh, the technician can initiate a chat option. So chat is uh, the customer can go ahead and chat with the technician who is on the other end. For example, this is the chat box that is provided to the customer so they can initiate the chat option here. So these are the options provided to uh, the technician there on the session. So all these options can be used uh, by the technician. And in case if all these options can be used by the customer to uh, during the ongoing session. And in case if you feel this particular uh, section occupying the whole screen, you can use this arrow to push uh, the customer console on the left. So this option, this icon indicates that there is an ongoing remote support session on the customer's, customer's device. So that is much uh, with the ongoing session. So these are the options provided to the technician and uh, the options provided to the customer uh, during the ongoing session. And one uh, option left out here is event notifications. So any of uh, the actions performed, like disabling the input devices or blanketing screen, all those actions will be displayed under the event notifications. Whenever you exit uh, the session, you can go ahead and revoke the respective option for the customer to gain back their mouse and the keyboard options uh, and so to work on their computer. So you can go ahead and exit the session by hitting end now. So this is how simple you go ahead, initiate an on-demand remote support session by clicking on the start now button, generating the nine digit session ID code and providing the nine digit session ID code to the customer on the other end. And the customer can uh, use the nine digit code to, jo to join the session by downloading an exe file. Once the customer joins the session, the technician will have full access and control over their screen. So that is uh, with uh, the options. Then moving back to the slides here, we will discuss about the scenarios experienced by uh, the technician during an on-demand remote support session. Is there is there any way I can raise an invoice for the remote support sessions I conduct? So yes, uh, we do have an option where you'll be able where you can raise an invoice, uh, which is called billing. Yeah, let me show you how the billing option works inside the application. So here under settings, you have organization and you have billing. So here uh, you'll be able to uh, bill your customers for the sessions uh, that is uh, conducted. So here you can go ahead and add a billing plan. You can enter the billing name and the currency. It can be a cost per session or cost per hour based on your preference. In case if it's going to be an unattended um, unattended uh, device cost you can also add it over here and you can create a bill once you create a uh, bill you can go back to your bills here it, uh, it will be uh, 
you'll be listed with all the bills and you'll be able to invoice the respective bill to the uh, to the customer and ask them to pay for it so that is with the billing option the next scenario is apart from browser what is the other option to start a remote support session uh, so you will be able to uh, start remote support sessions. So before that, uh, let me introduce the viewers that we have with Zoho Assist. So uh, we do have a Windows native viewer and web client. So Windows native viewer, uh, in case um, the technicians prefer a desktop-based application, so you can go for Windows native viewer. And if uh, the technicians are much comfortable with uh, web sessions, web-based sessions, web browsers, they can go for a web client. So let me show you how you can go ahead and configure the viewers here under settings. You have general and you have preference. So this is the Windows native client. Uh, this would be this would act like a, a Windows uh, a desktop based uh, application. So whenever you initiate a session, it will prompt you for uh, for you to download a particular agent for the very first time whenever you initiate a session. So uh, it will act as a desktop based application. Web client is where you can initiate a session in a new tab or a new window based on your preference. So these will be browser based sessions. So based on your preference, you can go ahead and have it customized. Uh, so moving back to the slides here, the next scenario is, uh, can I let customers choose to share an application window instead of the entire screen? So yes, you'll be able to share an application window instead of entire screen. We do have application sharing option inside the application. So let me show you under settings, general and preference. So this is enable application sharing. So here using this option, uh, whenever the customer joins the session, uh, the customer will, uh, will have an option to choose the respective application window or the entire screen. Or uh, if they choose to share only one respective application, uh, the technician will have access on over only that application and not the entire screen. So that is with uh, application sharing that we have with the application. And uh, next scenario is, can the customers raise a remote session request when required? So uh, we do have self-service portal option where uh, the customers can raise a request themselves using the client portal. Once the request is raised, the technician, whoever is available to assist them at that specific point of time, uh, they can uh, assign the request to themselves and have the customer troubleshoot their issue. So let me show you how the self-service option works inside the application. Under settings, you have remote support and you have self-service portal. So uh, yeah, this is the URL provided. So this would be the client portal URL. So let me show you how the client portal URL will look like where uh, the customer will be able to enter uh, their name, their issue description, and a short gist of what exactly they require from the technician can be entered here. So this is the client portal URL. You select one respective department, you enter a name here, and then you enter the email ID. For example, I enter a test email and I can write about the description of the issue. Once I hit submit, automatically the request will be uh, received at the technician side. So, so the technician can receive the uh, request here under service queue. As you see, the request is received and the state is in queue. Where you can assign the request uh, to uh, any of the technician who is working or you can assign it to yourself and instantly start the session and assist the customer who is waiting in queue. So that is uh, with um, the self-service portal option that we have. So moving to the next slide, um, can I automatically redirect the customers to a specific page or a website once the session ends? So yes, you'll be able to re redirect your customers to your website uh, details, or in the case, if you'd like to collect a survey from the customer of how the session was, yes, you can do that. Uh, we do have post-session redirection URL with the application where you'll be able to enter a web URL where the customer needs to be pointed once the session is ended. So this is where the post-session uh, redirection is under settings. You have uh, remote support and you have post-session redirection. So you can also choose it to be a department specific uh, and you can have that customized. So all you need to do is go ahead, enter the web URL and then 
uh, uh, you can uh, redirect your customers. So here you can enter the respective URL to which the customers must be directed to. And you can also uh, enter a survey form if you would need so. And then you need to enable this toggle button for it to re replicate on the customer screen once the session ends. So that is with the post session redirection option that we have. So moving to the next slide, uh, we will see the key features that is available with the application. So uh, the key feature is um, choose the best server. Choose the best server is uh, you can choose the respective server to which uh, in, in which um, the session should be connected to. So choosing the nearest gateway server will automatically enhance the session performance. So uh, we do have an option where you can choose uh, to connect to the nearest uh, server. So that, uh, for example, if you're connecting to a customer who is in Australia and you are from uh, any of the APAC regions, you are automatically you'll be connected to the nearest gateway center and the customer in Australia will connect to uh, the nearest uh, gateway center for enhanced connectivity. So let me show you how uh, you can have this uh, best server configuration under general, you have preference and you have connect automatically to the nearest gateway center. So this particular check box should be enabled for the customer and the technician to connect to the nearest gateway center. So that is one of the key feature that we have. And the other one is customer join and notification. So whenever a customer joins an on-demand remote support session, automatically the technician will be notified with a desktop uh, notification as well as a sound, a pop-up sound. So uh, this will help you whenever the whenever the technician is working on multiple tasks, or multiple sessions, uh, they'd be prompted uh, uh, with a notification stating that this particular uh, customer has joined and you will have to jump onto the respective tab for them to assist. So that is uh, available with Zoho Assist. So let me show you where you can have that customized under settings, general and preference. And here you go. Uh, which says show to stop notification when a customer joins. And you'll also have to enable the notification sum by enabling the toggle button. So that is uh, where the key feature that we have. The next one is uninstall at session end. So uninstall at session end will automatically uninstall the exe file that was downloaded by the customer whenever they join the session. So uh, once the session is ended, automatically the, the exe file will be uninstalled. Uh, not all customers or clients will prefer to keep a third party application on their remote computer. So in this case, you can have um, this particular option enabled, which is uninstall customer application after the session. End. So this particular option should be enabled. Once you have this enabled automatically, uh, once the session is ended, automatically the exe file that was uh, installed on the customer's computer will be erased. Then we have screen sharing. Uh, screen sharing, again, you'll be able to share uh, your own screen to the customer on the other end. So init you'll automatically initiate a screen sharing session rather of uh, on-demand se sessions. So that is uh, actually available with application. Let me show you how you can initiate uh, screen sharing sessions. So here you go for remote support and you have share my screen option. You can have this radio button enabled and you can enter the email ID and hit start now, or you can simply start now that will automatically initiate a um, screen sharing session. So here you can guide your customer to use this particular URL and you can provide them the session ID and the password. Uh, since it's a screen sharing session, it is again authenticated with a password. So, or you can also use this link uh, and share it to them and then you can share the password. Or you can also invite them via email. So here in screen sharing sessions, the technician would need to download the exe file in order to share their screen. So that is how the screen sharing uh, applic uh, screen sharing option works with Zoho Assist. So uh, the next key feature that we have is scheduling sessions. So you'll be able to schedule sessions. For example, say that you have uh, your uh, the technician is from any of the APAC regions, and uh, you have your customer in US, and you la like to schedule the session, which is um, which uh, uh, accommodates both of them at the respective time. So you can schedule the sessions in prayer and get the session started at the mentioned time. You can schedule sessions using the schedule option here. So here you can also choose it to be either uh, on-demand remote support or screen my, uh, share my screen option. You can enter the email ID of uh, the respective um, customer, and then you can give a title and a short description and then uh, you can block the date and the time. And in case of any, uh, how long the duration of the session should be. And in case of any reminders, you can set the reminders and you can go ahead and schedule the session. 
So once the session is scheduled, automatically you can see the session is scheduled at this specific time with the respective customer. And then you can start the session from here using the start option. So uh, the last uh, key feature that we have is uh, desktop and Chrome plugin. So uh, we do support uh, desktop based applications and Chrome plugins. So uh, if you are a Windows user and you would like to have a desktop based application in order to initiate uh, your remote support sessions and you'd like to have the whole complete application as a desktop application, yes, that is available. Here uh, you can go ahead and download your uh, desktop applications. So all the way at the right top corner, you have the downloads option. Here you can choose uh, it to be a desktop or uh, be it uh, Android or Windows or um, Linux based on your preference. You can have the desktop application configured here. So uh, it is for the technician as well as for the customer. So these options are available there for you. And then, uh, yeah, the next slide tells you about remote support on the go. So you as a technician will be able to initiate on-demand remote support sessions uh, from your mobile device itself. For example, say that you are traveling uh, and in the middle, uh, you would like to assist a person who requires immediate assistance. In that case, you can use your own mobile device in order to uh, get the issue troubleshooted. Where you can, well, all you need to do is go ahead, download the Zoho Assist Technician application from the Play Store, uh, being it Android, and from the App Store, being it uh, iOS device. So you can download it and then you can initiate the session. So here in the next slide, this is uh, the customer application uh, for the customer to join a um, session from their mobile device. So for iOS, it is going to be uh, this where they need to enter the nine digit session ID code provided by the technician. Once the code is provided, automatically they will need to authenticate and they are uh, the assist client and then they, they will start a session. So once the screen is broadcasted, uh, you'll uh, again have to authenticate few terms uh, for screen sharing and then that will start with the chat conversation. Once you start with the chat conversation, the technician will be able to watch over what exactly you are showcasing uh, on your mobile device. So that is with iOS and for Android, yes, again, the uh, customer can enter the 90 session ID code provided by the technician and the technician can go ahead uh, and the customer would need to authorize the screen sharing permissions. Once they authorize the screen sharing permissions, automatically uh, the session will be initiated and uh, the session will initiate with the chat conversation. Once the session is initiated, automatically the technician will have access and control over the Android device. So these are the technicians app that I mentioned. So I do have my team who will be sharing you the links from where you can go ahead and download the uh, application for technician apps as well as customer application from a Play Store as well as App Store. So keep your questions coming. I hope uh, the team is answering them instantly. So now uh, we will see about the customizations uh, part that we have with the application. The first option here is user management and custom roles. So as you all know, in an organization, you would have multiple technicians uh, managing um, multiple technicians managing the sessions uh, that is taken from your organization uh, if you are a service-based company or so. So in that case, managing all the users in one single portal might be uh, difficult, but that has been easily handled in Zoho Assist. Uh, and we also have custom roles where you can choose the roles that needs to be assigned to the technicians uh, for them to have access to. So let me show you how you can go ahead and manage the technicians here. Under settings, you have organization and you have manage, manage technician. So under users, you'll be able to go ahead and invite a respective technician. So here, click on invite technician. You can enter the email ID, the uh, the role name. Um, you can choose the role uh, to which the technician should be mapped to, and you can also choose the department and the group access. So once this is uh, done, you can invite the technician. So automatically an email invite will be sent from where the uh, user or the technician can accept the invite and join the organization account so we also have custom roles by default we have super admin admin and a technician role a super administrator is a person who has all privileges admin is a person again who has all privileges except the subscription and the two-factor authentication options that is provided then we have technician a basic set of uh, remote support and unattend uh, permissions are given to the technician in case if you'd like to customize you can clone the technician role and you can uh, create a technician um, role for yourself. 
If you would like to create a new role, you can also create a new role from here. You, are, you can enter the role name, the description, and here you can go ahead with the remote support options and you can enable, um, if you like to disable the clipboard combinations and if you'd like to disable the file transfer options, you can disable. Um, any of these actions can be performed and you can also uh, dis uh, enable the screen sharing permissions and, can, and you can hit save. So once the role is saved, automatically whenever you invite the technician, you can choose the role that you have created and assign it to the technician. So this is how you go ahead and manage uh, the users uh, in your organization portal. So the next option here is departments. Uh, as you all know, yes, in, a, in an organization, you would have multiple departments, say one from the sales team, one from the marketing team, one from the uh, uh, support team, and one from the debugging team, um, multiple teams. So managing these departments and the technicians inside the departments quite be, mm, it can be uh, quite difficult, but yes, it is managed using departments in Zoho Assist. So you can create your own departments under settings, organization, and departments. So here uh, you would have uh, uh, the de default department. And in case if you'd like to add a department, you can add a department here, and then you can create one for yourself. So that is, and you can also choose a respective technician who needs to fall under the uh, department and you can also choose the department admin. So I just hit, um, and I hit configure automatically. Um, the department gets configured there for me. So that is how you go ahead and uh, create a department and you can go ahead and manage your department from here. Under remote support, you have multiple departments and you can switch between the departments that you would like to switch and work on with. So that is with the departments option. So moving to the other option is rebranding and custom to me. And uh, rebranding is uh, you'll be able to brand your uh, brand the Zoho Assist application with your company logo, company name, and a few other details. And you can also set up custom domain where you can have your own domain so that your users, your technicians can log into the portal using your own company domain. So uh, let me show you how the rebranding option works. Under uh, settings, you have uh, rebranding, organization, you have rebranding. So here you can go ahead and enter the organization name, the admin's name, and the phone number. The logo can be entered. The fab icon, again, can be entered. You can also enter the portal URL. So once the, these changes are done, you can also map the custom domain. Uh, for example, now you would need to log into the portal using assist.zoho.com, as you see here. But in the case, if you'd like to have your own company name in order to log into the application, you can set up, you can add your domain, and then you need to verify your ownership uh, using your own domain provider. Once you verify the ownership, then we will authenticate and raise an SSL certificate. Once the SSL certificate is raised, you can use your own domain in order to log into the portal and access the application. So that is with the rebranding and custom domain option that we have. Then the next option is uh, reports and session audit log. So uh, reports and session audit, we do have an exclusive session uh, for reports where you can manage the sessions that has been conducted from the portal uh, for your auditing purposes. Or in the case, if you'd like to um, collect the recording of the particular session conducted and you'd like to circulate to the other technicians for them to do the exact and the same thing on the other missions, you can circulate it uh, using the reports uh, in which the session recording is saved. So let me show you uh, the report section that we have with Zoho Assist. Uh, exclusive in detail report section is provided. Under reports uh, module, we have remote support, unattended, and we also have custom report. So any of the sessions conducted from the application will be automatically uh, no, saved here. So under the report section. So you can check out for the start time, the title, the end time, the customer's IP, the customer's name, the technician's name and all the details and the type of uh, the agent it is. And in the case, if you'd like to download the recording, you can go ahead and download the recording from here. And you can also view the chart transcript and you can also view the notes that was um, taken during the session. And one exclusive feature that we have is the session audit report. Uh, session audit report, uh, yes, it again gives the exact details of what exactly happened during the session. Uh, all the details of the session will be uh, listed over here. Session notes, the recordings, the chat transcript. In case of any screenshots taken, can also be collected from here. 
One highlighted uh, option here with session audit report is it gives you the event logs, the exact timing of when the customer joined and what action was performed in the session will automatically be notified with the time. So here you can see customer started a screen sharing session. This particular uh, image quality was set to 100. All those details will be exactly uh, uh, notified here under the event logs option. You can export the event logs based on your preference, or you can also export it uh, in uh, in detail of all the sessions in a CSV or a PDF format. So that is with the reports uh, option that we have. Then we have email configuration and customize uh, templates. Uh, email configuration is uh, the from and the to address that are sent from the Zoho Assist application can be configured uh, based on your preference. And the email templates, the template can also be uh, set up based on your uh, preference. So let me show you where you can go ahead and customize your email templates. So here, uh, by default, we have a template created. In the case, if you like to create a new template, you can create a new template, inserting the custom fields, such as the technician's name, the join link, and the org name can also be uh, set up in the email templates here. It is also, again, department specific. Based on the department, you can have the template created. And based on the uh, events, you can have the template created. Then we have email configuration. The from and the to address can also be configured here. By default, it is going to be notifications at zohoassist.com. Uh, in the case, if you'd like to have it uh, customized to the technician's email ID or uh, any custom email ID for like support, we have uh, for Zoho Assist, it is support at the rate of zohoassist.com. In the case, if you'd like to have uh, customized uh, in a similar case, you can have that done here as well. So that is with the email configuration and the email templates. Lastly, we have uh, security uh, options provided uh, during the sessions, and uh, it can also be customized before you uh, go ahead uh, on a session. So let me show you the security options provided here under settings. So these are the options we have. Uh, the first option is privacy settings. Privacy settings, uh, we have concern. In case if you integrate with any of the third-party application, you always have a concern sign. So this is how the concern uh, will look like, which says I hereby allow this particular context to be imported. So only if you have the concern sign, we allow uh, the data transmission from one application to the other. Then we have data protection. Data protection, uh, only if the end user or the customer confirms the session, automatically the session will be initiated. We also have real-based access. You can restrict or enable set of permissions to the technician for them to access during the ongoing session. We also have confirmation prompt. Any of these actions performed during an on-demand remote support session can be controlled, and uh, it it will be notified uh, to the it will be notified to the customer on only if they accept uh, automatically that specific action can be performed. We have breach notification in case of any breach, you'll be automatically notified in 72 hours. Right to erasure, uh, we have um, any of the data that is stored in inside Zoho Assist such as the technician's IP, the customer's email address, the customer's IP can be deleted at a specific amount of time that you mentioned. Uh, and you can also remove user in case if uh, the added user is no longer uh, in your organization, you can remove the user from the remove user option. And again, uh, the data saved under the reports and the action log viewer can be set up with a retention period. So for example, if you set it up for 30, every 30 days, automatically the data will be erased uh, from the uh, report section and the action log viewer. Uh, the next option that we have under uh, security is action log viewer. Action log viewer gives you the entire details of what exact changes has been taken place in the application by the technicians. So here you can see uh, this specific user has uh, disabled the uh, Windows web client option. So that is notified. Uh, and we have enabled the Windows native client. So all these actions will be uh, shown here uh, under the action log viewer. So it is again department specific based on the departments. You can check it out. And in case if there is any warning or errors, you will automatically be notified and you can have it changed. So that is with uh, action log viewer. We also have multi factor authentication. Multi factor authentication is uh, you can go ahead and set up a, a, a multi factor authentication for your users before they log into the application. So it can be a fingerprint, face print, or an OTP. Any of the authentication methods can be set up. But uh, you as a super admin can have that managed. You can also reset the password of the customer um, with which they log into their application. 
So that is with the reset password. Then we have IP-based restrictions. As you all know, in, organ in organizations, we do have IP-based restrictions. So you can manage it from here. You can modify or disable the IP-based restrictions using the manage option here. Then we have data cleanup. Data cleanup, again, uh, any of the actions stored in reports and action log viewer will be erased of at the set of retention period that you mentioned here. So that is with the security options that we provide. So moving back to the slides here, uh, we will check out the integrations option that is available with Zoho Assist. So as I did mention, we have a few uh, Zoho applications that can be integrated with Zoho Assist, which is Zoho Desk, uh, and, uh, a ticketing tool, Sales IQ, a chatbot, a CRM, again, a customer relationship manager application, which manages all your leads, potentials, and so. Then we have Zoho Bookings, where you can use the bookings and uh, you can have the session link uh, to that booking. And then you have Zoho Flow again, where you can use it to uh, create your web hooks or you can um, create URLs or so. So then we have, um, you can integrate with few other third-party applications, which is ServiceNow, Zendesk, Freshdesk, Fresh Service, and Slack. So let me show you how you can go ahead and integrate it with inside the application. Moving to the application here under settings, you have integrations and you have apps. So here you can have it integrated with the respective application. Once you hit configure, automatically you'll be uh, taken to the marketplace where you'll need to authenticate before uh, logging to mar mar marketplace. You need to authenticate by using your username and password. Once you authenticate, you need to navigate to the marketplace and have the integration enabled. Once it is enabled, automatically any sessions conducted from these applications will be via Zoho Assist. So that is with a few applications in which Zoho Assist can be integrated. Then we have a software development kit, which is SDKs. Uh, we do support SDKs for both Android and iOS. So SDKs, uh, in case if you have your own mobile application developed for your own organization, and you'd like to conduct uh, uh, remote sessions, you'd like to initiate remote sessions from the mobile application, you can have these SDKs uh, used and then uh, register your app and then have uh, Zoho Assist uh, integrated within your app. Once it is integrated, any sessions conducted will be uh, will be with Zoho Assist, will be via Zoho Assist. So again, uh, SDKs are under settings, integrations, and mobile SDKs. So as I did mention, you need to register your app first. Once you register your app, it will automatically generate an SDK token. You need to use the SDK token and integrate your app. Once you integrate, automatically you'll be able to control a device using the remote session that is conducted by Zoho Assist. So that is with the SDKs that we have. Uh, lastly, in the roadmap, we have um, clientless remote support. Uh, clientless remote support is um, we are uh, coming up with uh, no download um, options. Like, for example, uh, in the session that you saw today, uh, we did have the customer download a particular exe file in order to join the session. But uh, we are coming up with no downloads where the client would need not download any of the application before they join the remote support session. So they'll just have a link and use the link in order to join the session directly without downloading. Then we have server updates, which includes new protocols. Um, we keep enhancing our gateway servers. So enhancing the gateway servers and connecting to the nearest gateway server will automatically uh, have a stable uh, session uh, without any interruption. So that we always keep working. And in case if any questions, please raise it over the q and I, I hope uh, the expert team around, they are answering it instantly. So meanwhile, during the training, we did receive a set of questions. So we will discuss the questions here, uh, which is, can I import my customer's contact to reach out to them quickly for support? So yes, you'll be able to import your contacts. Like for example, say that you have a list of contacts whom you frequently contact and, uh, and get the issue troubleshooted. Uh, you have them in a CSV format and you'd like to import it into Zoho Assist. Yes, that is possible. So let me show you the ways uh, via which you can import your contacts. Under settings, you have remote support and you have contacts. So here uh, you can import your Google contacts uh, or you can also sync your Zoho CRM. In case if you have uh, your leads in your Zoho CRM, you can have them imported. Um, um, in case if you have uh, your contacts, which is already in a CSV or a VCF file, you can have them imported. Once imported, automatically the contacts will be listed here under remote support. You have contacts. 
the list of contacts will be automatically listed here. And in the case, if you like to create a new contact from here, you can create it from here. And if you'd like to start a, a session, instant remote support session, you just can use this option to start the session, which will automatically generate a 90 session ID code. And an email invite will also be sent to the respective uh, customer for them to join the session. So this is one question. The other question that we received is, can I embed a widget on my website to join a session? So uh, yes, yeah, we do have a customer uh, widget where you'll be embed uh, uh, embed the particular iframe that is provided on your company website. So your whenever your customers uh, visit your website, they will uh, see the widget there and they can reach out to you and get the nine digit session ID code and then join the session using the widget. So let me show you how the widget will look like. Here under settings, you have remote support and you have customer widget. So this is going to be the iframe. So using this iframe, you can you, uh, have, you can go ahead and use this iframe on your company website and you can create a widget. So the widget will look like this and with the connect button, you can enter the 9 session ID code and hit connect, which will automatically um, um, initiate a session. So that is with the customer widget that we have. So yes, these are the questions that we did receive in the case if you like the training today and if it, is, if it was informative, please spread the word using your Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn account using the hashtag Zoho Assist and share your experience. We always welcome your feedback. 